born of nuclear radiation and destined to walk the earth forever, welcome to Godzilla Revithon! What's up, YouTubers of the world? Mega Geek Mix are here to give you guys the 12th installment to the Godzilla franchise, Godzilla vs. Gigan. Yes, that's right, that's, we're in now, 1972, where Godzilla takes on a brand new monster that was pretty much one of the only few positive parts into this film, that being Gigan. Why is this sounding like I'm already not really saying I like this movie so much? Well, that's due to the fact that they used a lot of stock footage in this film, and the human plot of it just dragged on when everything was being so completely obvious in the beginning. And that really brought the film down. But not as so much as something else I'll go into as I'm going along with some of the things in the movie I talk about here. But we'll just start off with the human protagonist being a guy named Gengiko, a manga artist who was trying to get a job somewhere, although he didn't like this, he didn't like the idea. Yeah, the person he was trying to get hired by didn't like the idea. And what he like and what he was thinking was uh, a monster of homework, calling himself Shukra Mamargan, the homework of monsters. And I gotta agree with the guy who did, who was trying to hire him. That is not a cool. That is not good at all. But he ends. But his girlfriend ends up giving him another job at a place called Kids Land, and that person accepts the job. I mean, accepts the idea about Shukra Mamargan, and then another drawing one he based off of his girlfriend. And I'd be careful with that first off for getting off track here, because his girlfriend's got a black belt in karate, so be careful what you do before you end up getting yourself beat up, Kenko. But that's besides the point, really. The guy accepts such a lame idea, and it's all because he's saying that he and the chairman that Genko meets later on are both trying to pr bring peace to the world, and someone's trying to stop them. That's someone being a girl who had a tape that she stole from them because her brother works for the same company for the same guys that that Gingo guy's working for. And what's even more so, and why this story drags on, is just because when that guy first meets the chairman, he's already talking weird, and here's the thing, they only call themselves the chairman and the secretary. They don't give themselves their actual names. And what's more so is that when the chairman finally... When, when the chairman's talking with that guy, Ginko, he's asking him what he's, what he's writing up, all this equation and stuff, and he's saying, have you ever heard of Space Nebula Hunter M? There, there, that straight off the bat shows that they're, from a, they're aliens from a different planet, and yet he's acting like, okay, this guy's just probably talking crack nonsense, too. If you never heard of anything like that, I think it's pretty much saying that this guy's an alien, because seriously, it, and then he, did, he just continues to go back and forth to the Godzilla Tower, which, by the way, is the main attraction for that kid's land place, a Godzilla Tower, which is used as the headquarters for those aliens. And just so you guys know, those aliens, they're actually cockroaches in disguise. Yeah, cockroaches from another planet. <laughs> yeah, it, it, I, I don't know what more to tell you guys. I mean, what... <laughs> At least maybe you could say maybe this is where Man in Black kind of gave off some reference of their idea when they brought in the first Man in Black and that roach being from another alien planet. But either because that roach in Man in Black was a cockroach too. But sorry for getting off topic there. I just wanted to throw that out there because that just popped into my head for a minute there. <laughs> But either case, what they th before they actually get e exposed that they're aliens, those those humans just continue to do all sorts of research, really much nonsense research when it doesn't have to be more obvious that they're aliens. But the tape that I mentioned that a girl took away, it plays an important role because it, it's actually tapes that are used by those aliens so they can control two monsters that they use to attack Tokyo. And that's King Ghidorah and Gigan. Now, now though, it's not only them, though, that it affects, like, those tapes. They also affect Godzilla and Anguirus, but not in the sense of being controlled, more in the sense of they can hear it and understand it, and they know of the alien's plot, so they they head to the island to stop them. But first off, let me guys show you something here that they do with Anguirus and Godzilla. Check this out. Something funny going on. 
You better jack. Yeah, that actually happened. Godzilla and Anguirus were talking. You could hear them talking. I don't understand why they did that. What did they have to do that for? We've always pretty much been able to understand these monsters by just their body language and how they were acting to understand them. Was there really a need to do that? I mean, I know this isn't really the first time it's happened, but that fit in with the movie. Back in Geetra the Three Headed Monster, it was translation of a conversation, which is something I'm sure we'll never understand with these guys. But, but this right here, there was no need for that. <laughs> oh, and also in the original Japanese bub, in the original Japanese, they had manga bubbles of that of that stuff. What was up with that? I don't understand that at all. <laughs> But I just wanted to throw that out to you guys on what did not need to be in that film, and that's definitely one of them. But what, like I said, the aliens were taken to control of Gigan and King Ghidorah, and they had those two pretty much destroy and everything. But before destroying things, he got this weird shot of how awful King Ghidorah looks when he's not moving around as he's guarding the Godzilla Towers, lying all around it with Gigan. It's really bad. Really bad. You can just tell it's just a man on puppetry, and these guys aren't really trying to move him or make him look real. But it, but it acts for everything else, like with the destruction of Japan, when it came to King Ghidorah, or pretty much anything that was around King Ghidorah, from the destruction of Japan to his battle with Godzilla and Anguirus, that was nothing but stock footage for use of that. And that's one of the other things that was wrong with this film. They used a lot of stock footage on things. I didn't really have a mind with the stock footage on Akira Ifukubi's music, but the stock footage on, like, everything else with King Ghidorah, from Gija the Three-Headed Monster, Destroy All Monster, Invasion of Astro Monsters, Rodan, War of Gar Gargantuans. I was just, like, saying, dude, what was wrong with you guys? You just lacking on things or just didn't give a crap about this movie? Because that's all it was. <laughs> but the... But the positive size to the film, as I said before, Gigan was one of them. The other one was we being introduced to monster tag battle. Godzilla versus Anguirus and got King versus King Ghidorah and Gigan. And it was a great battle. I mean, sure, they're I mean, sure, like, like I said, nothing but stock footage with King Ghidorah, but when it came to Gigan and stuff, we saw some pretty good monster action tag battles. <laughs> there was this one scene where God uh, better yet, yeah, let me show you. Yeah, Godzilla and Anguirus formulating a plan, but why did they mess up Godzilla's voice? Godzilla's roar with that? I don't get it. But that's, an, that's just besides the point. The tag battles were great. Anguirus and Godzilla showed real great te teamwork there. First by tossing a boulder at Gigan and Godzilla holding King Ghidorah from behind and having Anguirus just knock him back with his spike with his spike shell. <laughs> but the really cool scene I love with Godzilla was him throw was him throwing King Ghidorah over his shoulder and right on the ground. It was so great. I was like saying, yeah, of course do it three times. Show how amazing that was. Snacks for Guy again. What the reason he looks cool is because for one, a buzz a buzz saw on his chest there, and then hand cooked claws. You can tell this monster's the one you don't want to mess with because here's the thing about him. He is the first and all I mean not the only, but he is the first ever monster that made Godzilla bleed. First off, using his buzz shot to cut off on his shoulders and make blood spill out from there, and then just knocking him with his hook hands on his head, on his face, and just making him bleed badly. <laughs> but he, even still, in the end, they were no match for Godzilla and Anguirus' teamwork, because here's the thing, Gigan and King Ghidorah were in the end still just being controlled. They didn't really know what they could do about teamwork, and that's when it got to a point where they couldn't handle it anymore, that they flew off. And asked for the aliens, well, they were taken care of by the humans when the humans placed a bomb in the tower and the tower explodes and all's well and good. Godzilla and Anguirus swim on, swim on back home as the sun rises. Also with the ladies and the main pro 
antagonists of humans waving goodbye to them. <laughs> and it makes me think that those guys were being jealous that why are those monsters being the heroes that the girls being fan over while they don't get any credit at all? <laughs> uh, what can you do? They just love heroes and big giant heroes to be exact. <laughs> But that's all for today, guys. If you guys are enjoying my videos, click the subscribe button, hit the bell icon if you know if I when I make more videos. And I'll see you guys in the next installment of Godzilla Revithon! Until then, Mega Geek Mixer signing out. Bye!